Hi guys! Today we're going to explore the fascinating topic of psychopathy and delve into the minds of those who are often considered to be the most dangerous and manipulative people on the planet. Serial Killers We know that psychopathy is a serious and complex subject, so the focus of this video is going to be the link between psychopathy and violent behaviors. Also, there's a special bonus for you later in the video, where you'll learn an experiment to detect psychopathy. And trust me, you're going to want to stick around until the end of this video for it. Welcome to Wellness Lenses, where we talk about mental health and the journey to self-development. We post videos every Monday and Thursday, with occasional bonus videos on Sunday. Without further ado, let's dive in. Now, when most people think of psychopaths, they imagine the villains they've seen in movies and TV shows, cold, calculating, and completely devoid of empathy. But what does it really mean to be a psychopath? Psychopathy is a personality disorder characterized by a lack of empathy, manipulative behavior, and impulsivity. Psychopaths are often charming, intelligent, and charismatic, which makes them incredibly successful in certain fields like business or politics. However, these traits can also make them dangerous, especially if they turn to violence. But here's the thing. Not all psychopaths are dangerous. In fact, many psychopaths can live normal lives without ever resorting to violence. Psychopaths, who do not become killers, often have high IQs and can use their charisma and charm to manipulate others to get what they want without resorting to violence. One of the reasons why this class of psychopaths can manipulate others so effectively is because they are excellent at reading people. They identify people's weaknesses and vulnerabilities and use this information to their advantage. Say there's a psychopathic CEO who wants to get a new product approved by the board of directors. Instead of resorting to threats or violence, they might use their charm and intelligence to convince the board that the product is a good idea. So this CEO makes the board feel like they're part of the decision-making process and that their opinions matter even though the psychopath is really the one in control. This person is simply masking their true intentions by presenting themselves in a way that is very appealing and likable. So, what is it that pushes the psychopath towards violence? One of the key factors that can trigger violent behaviors in a psychopath is a lack of impulse control. And what exactly do I mean by impulse control? It's simply the ability to resist an immediate urge or temptation and instead make a more rational decision. It's like when you're trying to stick to a diet and you see a piece of cake. If you have good impulse control, you'll be able to resist the temptation and stick to your plan. Psychopaths often have a very low threshold for frustration and are quick to lash out when things don't go their way. Or think about it this way. When you're angry or upset, you might feel the urge to lash out or say something hurtful. But most of us can stop ourselves and think before we act. We're able to control our impulses and make rational decisions about how to handle the situation. But, for a psychopath, that ability to control their impulses is diminished. They may feel the same anger or frustration as the rest of us, but they're less able to stop themselves from acting on those feelings. This lack of impulse control can make it difficult for them to resist the urge to act out violently. Another factor that can contribute to violent behavior in psychopaths is a history of abuse or trauma. Psychopaths who have experienced physical or sexual abuse during their childhood may develop a callous and unemotional attitude towards others as a coping mechanism. This can lead to them seeing other people as objects to be used for their own gain, without regard to their feelings or well-being. As a result, they become more likely to engage in violent behavior, such as physical aggression, sexual assault, or even murder. A history of abuse or trauma can also lead to an increased risk of developing other mental health issues, such as depression, anxiety, or post-traumatic stress disorder. These conditions contribute to the development of violent behavior in psychopaths. Imagine a child who grows up in an abusive household. They might learn that violence is an acceptable way to solve problems, and they might become desensitized to the pain and suffering of others. If that child also has psychopathic traits, they might be more likely to lash out violently at others as they get older. Hey guys, before we move on, if you're enjoying this video and finding it helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel. I share videos about different mental health and self-development topics, including current research, 
personal stories, and actionable strategies that can help you improve your life. So, it's worth noting that many psychopaths who do engage in violent behavior have a history of criminal activity. This can include things like theft, fraud, and drug use. Criminal behavior can be a way for psychopaths to feel a sense of power and control over their environment, and can ultimately lead to more violent behavior. Also, remember that psychopaths tend to have difficulty controlling their impulses and may be more likely to act out aggressively. They also cannot feel remorse or guilt for their own actions, making it easier for them to engage in criminal behavior without any concern for the consequences. But it's also important to remember that not all psychopaths who engage in criminal behavior will become killers. Many psychopaths can recognize the consequences of their actions and can keep their behavior in check. So, how can we identify psychopaths who may be at risk of becoming violent? One of the key warning signs is a history of violent behavior or criminal activity. Other red flags can include a lack of remorse or guilt, a tendency to blame others for their problems, and a sense of entitlement. Now you might be wondering, can psychopaths be treated? As you can imagine, treating psychopaths can be a bit of a challenge. After all, how do you help someone who doesn't think they need help? But that hasn't stopped psychologists from trying. One common form of treatment for psychopathy is cognitive behavioral therapy, which focuses on teaching patients how to manage their impulses and control their behavior. But what about psychopaths who have committed crimes? Can they be rehabilitated and reintegrated into society? Well, that's a bit more complicated. While some psychopaths can be successfully treated and go on to lead productive lives, others are considered too dangerous to release back into the community. In these cases, they may be sentenced to long-term institutionalization or even life in prison. At the end of the day, psychopathy is a complex and nuanced topic that requires careful consideration and understanding. While it's true that some psychopaths are capable of committing violent acts, it's important to remember that not all psychopaths are killers and that many individuals with this personality disorder can lead happy and successful lives without ever harming another person. One thing that remains true is that understanding psychopathy can help us recognize and protect ourselves from potentially dangerous individuals. We also learn to have more empathy and understanding for those who have been impacted by psychopathic behavior, whether as victims or loved ones. And now for the bonus I promised earlier. I'm going to share with you an experiment that you can carry out to detect psychopathy. Research has suggested that psychopaths may have a harder time detecting sarcasm and irony. So, if you're ever in a conversation with someone you suspect may be a psychopath, try using a sarcastic or ironic tone and see if they pick up on it. It could be an interesting experiment. Psychopaths have a difficult time understanding sarcasm or irony because they are less capable of reading emotions and social cues. When you use sarcasm or irony, you are relying on the other person to pick up on the fact that you don't mean what you're saying. And psychopaths struggle with this because they don't have the same level of empathy and emotional intelligence as non-psychopaths. While this may make social interactions challenging for them, it's important to remember that not all psychopaths are violent or dangerous, and with the right help and support, they can learn to navigate social situations more effectively. That's all for today's video. I hope you found it informative and thought-provoking. If you have any thoughts or questions on the topic, please feel free to leave a comment below. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel for more content like this. Thanks for watching.